Game publishers are the key to success to any big game out there. Is that still true in 2024? A lot of game developers are walking away from big deals with publishers on purpose and it might be the best thing for them. Which is crazy to say nowadays because 10 years ago it was the absolute opposite. So let's talk about it in this video because I think it's absolutely fascinating and I think it kind of paves the path for the future of the games industry. Let's do it. A few weeks ago, I met with quite a lot of developers um, at Gamescom. I made a video, go and check it out if you haven't, about my experience. However, I want to expand on this idea that a lot of developers are choosing to actually go self-publishing instead of basically being published by a publisher. Um, and this is something that is truly unique in today's time because not long ago, you had to get a publishing deal in order to publish a game. And if you didn't, your game was as good as dead or not really available or not really seen by anybody. And this is to do with a bunch of different variables. Normally, marketing, QA, different like help that they can give you. But the biggest pillar is definitely marketing. If uh, your game is not seen by anybody, then it doesn't really exist. Now, I think that the biggest pillars for the change, the catalysts for the change is number one, creative control. I'm saying this as a game studio owner myself in Proxima, having creative control of your game is highly underrated. It's crazy how much it changes for you as a developer when you know you have full creative control of the game, of the things that you want to do versus the things that you can do when a publisher has their hold on the game. So not all publishers are created equal, just the disclaimer. There is some very, very good publishers out there that actually allow you to have full creative control. They trust the team and part of the investment in the studio is the fact that they did their due dil diligence and they understood what the team wants to do. They understood that they have a plan and they believe that the team can actually deliver this end product. Therefore, they give them creative freedom and they give them the support that they need. However, historically, when there's money, especially as the money exponentially bigger, that creative control gets taken away because all of a sudden people need to be assured that there is profit at the end of the line. And this is why creative freedom is so important for any studio, especially a brand new studio like ourselves, that wants to have creative control over the game. Because I'm a big believer that the way you present yourself the first time to the world is the way that the world will perceive you afterwards, right? So for me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people feel the same way from other studios, your first game kind of dictates a little bit of what the studio is about right and if the game is about quality and uh, amazing creativity and about like looking absolutely fantastic and feeling fantastic and having all kinds of cool ideas then that's how you're going to be perceived but if the game instead is basically another round the mill kind of game that actually is copying different things from other games then that's basically what you're going to be as a studio. But this is definitely a big catalyst of why certain studios want to self-publish. The second big catalyst, I think, is revenue share. Revenue share is very much the split that you take with a publisher. So the way it works, for those that don't know, is that a publisher comes in, you are an unknown studio with an unknown team working on a super cool IP, and the publisher sees the potential in that IP. So therefore, they say, we'll give you the money, we'll fully fund the game, will fully fund the studio, and then you deliver the game for us. Now, a publisher is interested in the game, not the studio itself, just the game. So they give you all the money, you make the game, the game comes out, and then there's a, basically a, a share split. Normally they take, it's like 70-30 or something along those lines, If that's and that's a good share, but sometimes it's even more aggressive than that. However, for the first year or two, you're most likely not going to make any of that money because the publisher has to recoup the money that they invested in you already. So let's say that they invested $500,000, right? So they need to make that money back. So your game is on Steam. Until it makes $500,000, you're getting nothing. And then after you make that $500,000, you get that split of 70-30 or 80-20 or whatever it is, right? So that is basically how things work. 
The problem with that is you now want to make your second game, right? But how are you going to fund the second game, even though you have a game out there, if you have no money coming in because you haven't recouped the first ones, the first money that actually was basically invested in you. So you kind of paralyzed until you get some uh, revenue kind of coming back. So that's the old way of doing things or the way that a publisher deal works. Now, if you self-publish, all of the money that gets sent to you, it's 100% yours as a studio. And it means that not only can you actually get to have wages and pay people, but also hopefully if your game is successful, you get to have a little bit of profit that you can then invest in the second game. So you start you can start to see how much better that is because you can have a little bit more of the pot of the money, the initial money. So that success that you see in numbers equates to money. Uh, when you go with a publisher, especially when you are a small studio, you actually see that success, but you have none of the money for a while at the very least. If you have an excellent game that has lots of profit, 100%, you can make that money in no time, and then you can have lots of profit. But it needs to be very successful. And that's not necessarily true, as we all know, of all games. So this is why self-publishing becomes so powerful, because even though it's incredibly hard for you to actually make it and finish that game and have have it out once you have it out if it's if successful you get to keep all the money and the third thing that actually is making developers want to change from publisher to self-publishing is access to platforms such as epic games uh, steam uh, gog they you have more than ever access for free to platforms that actually have an amazing amount of players with their eyeballs on this platform waiting to see what's cool, what's next, what's popular. And you don't really need much more than that in order to have a successful game. If your game catches fire on Steam and lots of people kind of like start playing and it goes up the chart and people see it in the charts and it keeps going up, immediately with no marketing, no nothing, your game can actually be making a whole lot of money, right? And this is something that is basically unheard of about you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you needed to have a marketing budget in order to make things happen. It's not so true anymore nowadays, which is very, very powerful indeed, because it gives the developer a lot of power to basically self-publish by themselves. You still need to do marketing, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, two games actually stood out to me, at least, in Gamescom and then the time after Gamescom. The one game that actually stood out to me as a self-published game that looks really, old, that has lots of potential, that had an amazing booth, that had a free comic on the day, was a game by the, the name of Bornless. It's a UK studio, really lovely people, and I, I wish them all the success because they have all the ingredients of a team that is genuinely dedicated to a game, and I really feel like games like this, being successful, is what we need for the future of the industry in games. So basically the creativity is what drives the game. The second game is a game that I saw recently that I mentioned in a previous video called Forever Winter by Fun Dog Studios. And this game, they are trying different tactics when it comes to marketing by speaking directly with the players and also self-publishing. And basically saying, if you the players want certain things, we will do them because this is what's best for the game. And I think that's basically the rhetoric that we need to have as developers to talk directly with the people that wanna play the game. Like just a, a week or two ago, I made a video about starting a YouTube channel, creating a niche, and then focusing on that niche and talking with the community. I think the same thing is happening more and more in game development where people don't wanna hear from the publisher, People, players, want to hear from the developer. What are you guys doing? How is game, this game gonna be better? What's being updated? All of those things I think need to actually come true to fruition so players feel a little bit more at peace that I'm investing a lot of time in this game, but I feel like the developers really care for the game. Now, the biggest challenges of self-publishing is number one, marketing. Marketing is not gonna go away anytime soon, but I do think that the platforms, Steam, Epic, GOG, they actually help you a lot to kind of like minimize the marketing impact that it had before in comparison to now, but still you need visibility. So I think that like I commend uh, shows such as, you know, the BAFTA Game Awards and like the Video Game Awards, the Summer Game Fest, 
those events are really good because uh, a lot of the time the hosts and the, the organizers, they give a chance to small indie studios that wouldn't otherwise have any marketing to market their games. And I think that there is other uh, avenues as well out there that allow you to see or be discovered by people out there. So I think it's getting easier for sure, but I do think that having a marketing budget behind your game still helps you a ton and basically almost guarantees that the game is gonna have some type of return that will allow you to then, you know, recoup those costs if you have a publisher or if you actually self-published, you know, recoup the costs that you spend by building the game with no money, right? <laughs> or to invest your own money into it. Now, there's also the challenge of distribution and also QA, and there's a few other things. And what I mean by that is that developing a game for PC on Steam is relatively easy because that's what you're using to create the game. It's a PC, so you package it, you put it in Steam. It's relatively easy. Not super easy. It comes with these challenges, but it's the easiest option out there. However, if you actually had a publisher, a QA house, um, you know, somebody that could help you port the game to a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch, it means that your game now lives in different platforms, which means that the distribution of the game has many more opportunities to sell. So maybe the game is not super successful on PC, but it becomes a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch because of the demographic. Uh, things like that matter. Same thing with QA, debugging a game, finding all the bugs, making sure that you kind of like put the game through its paces so when it comes out, when it's out in players' hands, is as clean as possible so you don't get a lot of complaints. You can have a beautiful game that is the most fun game, but if it's riddled with bugs, we all know where that ends. And nobody wants that, especially after working on it so hard. Now, if you're excited about seeing more indie devs flourish and thrive, hit the subscribe button for more gaming tips. Now, what do you think? The industry as it is right now, is changing incredibly fast and indie devs are starting to self-publish quite a bit. Now, do you think it's gonna be a trend that is gonna keep going? Or do you think we're gonna go back to how things used to be before, where publishers were king and developers were at their mercy and therefore, you know, some things great, sometimes not so great. So, let me know down below in the comments about what do you think the industry is going next and that's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and until next week, as always, stay well, stay safe, peace.